guys, this is Fee, Diamond in the Rough. Thought I'd do a, a bit of a whip and chat. Um, I haven't been 100% myself lately and I thought a whip and chat. Including a trip down memory lane in my Egypt travels. So grab your, grab your whips. <laughs> okay, grab your work in progress. Whether it be diamond painting or any other craft, you don't have to diamond paint, you just work on your whips. And while I go through down memory lane for the next exciting episode of my Egyptian travels. So I hope you're all comfortable. And I'll now go to what I've done is I've gone through to my photo so then I can uh, take you through where we're going and right yeah. So I think I finished off where oh, well, I was exhausted. Uh, I spent the night at well night a few hours at Moven Peak in Aswan. And uh, I was getting an early wake up call. I had my lunch, it would have been packed for me. And I was off to Abu Simbel. And I think that's how you pronounce it. I can't recall. <laughs> I don't think anybody actually said that. Anyway, so I was um, picked up by the same two guys that took me to the airport. They That picked me up from the airport. They took me back to the airport and got me through security uh, and for my plane. Now it wasn't a big plane. Um, this was additional trip that I'd requested. Uh, if I hadn't selected this part of the trip, I probably would have been still sound asleep in my bed at that point. Or I would have been on a sleeper train because I initially did want to do a sleeper train. Oops, what am I doing? P. Uh, so we, he got me to, they got me to the airport uh, and I hopped on the plane and um, flew to Abu Simbel. Um, there was only a 45 minute flight. So it was a really, really, really quick flight. Uh, basically you go up and then you come down. <laughs> that was it. 45 minutes. I've never been on a flight so quick as that. Obviously, we didn't have to travel far. When researching for the trip, um, and I wanted to go down to Abu Simbel, um, identified the fact that. Hang on, I've got to get my next letter. Um, okay. Uh, identified the fact that I wanted to go there, and there's a choice of there's a choice of a couple of ways to get to Abu Simbel. Uh, one is by plane and the other is by bus. However, if you go by bus, because of the area that it goes through, you go through with a security escort because uh, it's location right on the, I think it was the Sudan River, Sudan border, sorry. Um, so it was, they need it for protect, they, you have to have that protection to go through um, and close to the borders to get to Abu Simbel. However, if you fly, you don't. And it takes 45 minutes to fly. Or <laughs> I think it's a two and a half, three hour bus trip there. Me, me? no, nah, not, not going by bus. <laughs> So yeah, I went by plane. Met by a gentleman, I can't even remember his name. He was really, he was nice. Um, took me to that something. I was handed an envelope. <laughs> it seems really dodgy. But I was handed an envelope by the guys that dropped me off at the airport um, and said to give this to the, to the guide who, who met me, who was going to meet me at the, at, at the other end. Um, so, yep, no worries, not realising what it was. 
So it got to the when I when I got picked up, I turned around and said to the the my guide, I said, "Here, this is I was to give this to you." And he's opened it up, and it's full of money. Um, basically, the way they work is um, he picks me up, and that was actually the fee that they paid for him to take me on the tour of Abusinville. So yeah, now Abu Simbel is huge, absolutely huge. Um, when you consider that they, when they built one of the dams in Egypt, this dam, when it, once it was built, was going to have Abu Simbel underwater. So the undertaking that they did there was they they moved Abu Simbel from where it originally was to where it is now so that they could build this dam. And to think for what it took them to cut it to pieces because basically it was a mount, it was a mountain or a hill or whatever, but they cut it to pieces, cut it into pieces and rebuilt it exactly as as it had stood um, the only difference is just the degrees of longitude and latitude basically um, so that in itself when you look at Abu Simbel and I'll pop some pictures in when you have a look at the size of it um, I think there is a picture of me standing in front of one of the openings that gives you a real good idea of size. Um, I am holding the the ankh, the ankh, which is the key of life. Yeah, don't ask me why. It just looks really good. It's just something of here. I hold this in the photo, and it's like okay. Obviously, it meant something, so I had it done. So I held it. Ah, oh, where's that letter? One thing that I need to do, I haven't worked on this one for a while, so that's a lowercase p. So, yeah, Abu Simbel was massive, and it's awe inspiring to think that people were able to move this section by section and rebuild it back exactly as it stood. You can see the joins. Hang on, another, another, another symbol. You can see the joins. However, they're not that obvious. Where is my four? There it is. So you can see the joins. But they aren't too obvious and it's more, although you can see them, it's more in awe of what they did to move it. So I've gone in and had a look at that. Um, and, yeah, what can I say about Egyptian monuments except, my gosh, they're huge. They're big. They're impressive. Mm. Oops. Stuck to the bits. To the... Canvas. So from there, turned around and taken back to the airport. And although the plane wasn't scheduled to leave for another, I think, wasn't scheduled to leave for another half an hour. But because all the passengers were there, uh, ready to depart, they turned around and got us on board and got us flying out of there ahead of schedule. Go figure. Um, you don't get many airports that do that. It's like, oh, well, everybody's here. Let's get you going then instead of waiting for anybody. Uh, mind, anybody leaving that area would have been either booked on that plane or there by bus. So I don't think they get many emergency. Oh, I need to fly here. Um, and, okay, so we got up the plane, got up in the air, um, I'd eaten my, I think I ate my packed lunch. Um, and I will put in a couple of pictures from the plane. Um, yeah, it's, it's amazing. 
amazing to see the size and yeah. Oh, uh, I think I fell asleep on the plane. Short, it was up and down. That flight was less, it was about, only about half an hour it took us to get there, which, yeah. Yeah, Some short distances. Pretty cool. Um, so from there, the two guys picked me up from the airport, but there was also another gentleman with them. Um, he was in your typical Egyptian archaeologist khaki colours um, with the khaki pants and a khaki vest, but he had a pinkish reddish top on. Um, he introduced himself um, and he was my, he was going to be my guide for the tour um, while I was on the, on the boat. Uh, I, was go, I, I was going to be on there with him and yet he was going to be taking me all around everywhere. Oh, okay. Now he introduced himself and I didn't catch the name, but he said, oh, you won't forget it. It's like, it sounds like red wine. And I'm turned, I've just turned around and said to him, um, I'm allergic to wine, so it won't make any difference. Uh, because I hadn't really copped, captured his name, it, it just didn't sink in. Um, but yeah, it took me they, to the three guys. Um, Radwan actually sat, well, that was his name, Radwan. Um, he sat in the back of the other vehicle with me and talked about all this different stuff about Egypt. And the first place we went to was the dam. Which um, is something they are so proud of. It is the high dam, um, and there is an image there where we'll sh where you can see it, um, and you can see Lake Nasser, which is where Abu Simbel was basically near there, I think it was. No, no, it wasn't. No, you actually no, sorry, you can see on the on the picture you can see the direction to Abu Simbel. Um yeah. Jeez, my memory's going from what I was doing, where I went. But yeah, we went to the high dam and they really they the Egyptians are proud of their dams. Um, and, and fair call, because they are in such an arid, dry place, the dams give so much life and bring so much life to them, um, which is how they're able to survive. So they use the dams for, obviously, for water. Electricity is the big one. And there is a lot of high security on their dams because if a dam is blown up, it then um, affects power. So, you know, if you can imagine, you, if somebody blew up a dam or blew up like the high dam, that would cripple Egypt. It would take a long time for Egypt to um, recover from something like that. Um, yeah, it's quite amazing to, to consider. They, um, so yeah, they're very, very proud of their dams. Uh, and uh, to me, I was just looking at a dam. <laughs> um, I think probably because of the dams that I've seen here in Australia. Uh, um, I didn't understand the importance of it until I understood the importance of it later on. But at the time, I didn't realise the importance of it. But it was a big dam. It was pretty big. It was impressive. And then, uh, where did we go? We went to, went, got on a little boat and went to, oh, what is the place called? Why can't I remember where it was that we went to? Uh, I 
are the fillet temple. Okay, so the fillet temple, I'll throw some images in obviously yet again. The fillet temple was where things started coming together for me, where I started understanding things. I was, it was here that we saw what the impact of different countries occupy, occupying Egypt had done. And this, this fascinated me because it talked about the, you know, obviously you've got the Egyptians, but then it talks about the French. You spoke about the uh, Muslim, the Italian, well, not Italian, the, the was it, or the Greeks? Um, yeah, so you talked about, you know, what effect uh, all these different nationalities, all these different countries coming and invading Egypt, what effect they had. And the biggest spot here was where I could see what had been done to the Philae Temple. There was, you could see where things had been shot. Yeah. Um, but you could see um, where the images were, and I will say desecrated. So for, for, a, com for a country that um, had their beliefs and that are based on many gods um, and to then to have another country that has no respect for the fact that another person another place's religion because you know they, their aim was just to take over or whatever but the um, the Philae temple had a lot of the images of people had been actually chipped out so you couldn't see faces you could see the bodies um, but you could not see the faces and that was the Muslim um, that did that but there's places where the French or the Russians had removed pieces and taken them away um, you know, so you, you didn't get the full, you couldn't see the full temple. Although you were looking at the temple, you couldn't really enjoy the full temple because it had been removed. Um, and each country had taken and affected this temple um, in its own way. Uh, and this temple, idiot. This te sorry, <laughs> this temple. Uh, I, I put a drill down, but it wasn't the right. wasn't where I wanted it to go to start off. With. So this temple was actually the first of the temples that I'd really seen, apart from the pyramids and that. But these, this is real temple stuff that I hadn't seen before. Um, yeah, which was pretty amazing to see it anyway. So we've gone anyway. We've gone on to the temple of Philae. <clears throat> I'm looking for that one and had a look around now red one I learned with red one with from this one is he takes you all the way around and tells you about everything and then he turns around and said after once he's finished talking about things he turns around and he says okay now it's your turn to wander around enjoy have a look take the pictures you want um, this is the way I run the way I the, that I work is I'll explain to you everything and then you have your free time to do whatever you want to wander around and look um, at whatever you want. But when you're finished, come around to this point and we will sit down and have lunch. Okay, so I've gone around, um, had a further look around, took lots more photos. So you'll see quite a few more photos, obviously. Um, uh, what the just trying to look up if there's any that I really want to point out. There was one thing that there's is there, is there, is there one image, one picture here that I'll show you that where they didn't one one group of uh, one of one of the countries that invaded didn't take away 
from the temple. They didn't take away or damage the temple. What they did do, they built one of their own structures there too as part of. Yeah, not to be not to take it away, but to keep it. Yeah, they didn't damage anything. And uh, that was the Romans. And you can't mistake a Roman Roman image <laughs> uh, with its pillars. It was all set off by itself. Romans, Greeks, here's Greeks. But it stood off by itself away from everything. In this picture, you can see the temple um, on in the in the middle, but to the right of it, you'll see that this is the the other monument. This is what was built. It was the Greeks. Why do I keep saying the other? Nah, probably because of my nationality. Uh, and anyway, from there, we, I, I you know, taken my photos and I've wandered around and I went and met Radwan and we sat down in a little cafe that's on the island and ate lunch. While we're sitting there, you have all these cats. All these cats are everywhere. Cats and kittens everywhere. So that was my first taste of so many cats and kittens. And I had one that was right near my left leg and I've gone down to pat it. And the little bugger didn't pat, didn't accept the pat. It swiped me and scratched me. Now, there's an event that comes up and I don't know whether it was one thing or whether that event was this, what this kitten had done to me. But this kitten had scratched me, so his paws had gotten into me um, and possibly that I didn't wash my hand properly from or had wash, wash the scratch properly um, because they are kind of, well, kind of diseased a bit. All sorts of stuff gets caught under cat claws. Um... So yeah, we had lunch and the red one just turned around and the cat keeps shooing the cats away. Um, yeah, because yeah, they're just everywhere and they take liberty and believe that they can go wherever they want. Well, I mean, that's cats for you and Egypt is probably more, uh, more so because of the, well, the cats, obviously. Hmm. Did I just put that in the right? Yeah, no, that's right. Okay. So we've had lunch <laughs> with the cats uh, and then we've gone back on the little boat and we've put some pictures around, pretty interesting little pictures, um, just while we are on the water. Uh, and then we head to the actual, towards the ship, but towards the boat, not really knowing it was the boat, but we went, we were taken to, to where uh, the water is and um, I was supposed to go on a Feluca boat ride. Now for, yeah, that's something that's on the Egyptian river, um, the Egyptian river on the Nile is one of the things to do is ride a felucca. But Rodwan had turned around and said, well, it's too windy and we can't guarantee you'll be back in time to get to your boat for your Nile cruise. So we've got you a motorbike that'll take you around nice, uh, nicely and ride, ride, ride. It's like, okay, right now. Um, so we took, we got on this boat, fair sized boat, probably fits 30 people. And because uh, I'm traveling solo, it was just me, Radwan, and the gentleman operating the boat. Doesn't that look out of place? <clears throat> uh, so we've done that. We've, we've gotten on, and he's talked to me about all sorts of things about um, what goes on around the river um, and just... I think he just left me be um, to just take photos because he realised that I wasn't, I think he realised I wasn't listening. 
I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I've gone around and managed to get a picture of a kingfisher, but a few other birds. I've got a picture of a kingfisher, but he's so far away the photo wasn't really that good unless you zoom in on him. So um, the tombs, but not of pharaohs and that there were some tombs or whatever. I don't know what they call them. can't remember what they call them. On the West Bank. And, uh, yeah, you could see where there was openings to them. Uh, so, yeah, it's just a place where people have been buried or, yeah. And <clears throat> from there, so I was exhausted. I, I t stopped taking in any information, completely taking in, because I was so exhausted. So I remember that I'd gotten up, I'd gone to bed at like, I don't know what time, but I basically had two hours sleep in, you know, 36 hours. Um, um, so we finished that little boat ride and we've gone to my cruise ship. Now, when it came to getting on that ship, it was the Stegenberger Minerva. And so we've gotten on board and Radwan's gone to check me in and then there was interesting discussion happening. Obviously not in English. I did not understand a word. But I know what impression I got. My impression was is that um, I apparently was booked on this but they didn't have my booking. And um, it got a bit heated. It was rather interesting. It got a bit heated. Um, so Rabban's, after a little while, Rabban's come back to me and he said, oh, we'll sort, we've got to sort, I've got to sort something out. Go up to the top deck. He took me up to the top deck. And he said, just sit here and relax and um, I'll, I'll come and get you once this is all sorted out. I think I was up there for about an hour and a half while they set it out. May have been shorter, may have been longer. I was too tired to really take any notice. Too tired and emotional to take any notice of anything except that. All I wanted to do was go to bed. <laughs> All I wanted to do was have an afternoon nap. Mm. Uh, so yeah, um, that was, he's come up to me and gone, okay, your room is all sorted out now. So I've gone back onto the bed, back down. I've been taken to the bottom of the boat, the lowest level and taken to my room which was the very first room at the stairs um, to the left of the stairs and I've walked in although well, Radwan didn't the, the cabin guys walked me took my bags and that um, I walked in and I've looked and I've gone you're kidding me you have got to be kidding me um, yeah, I believe I may have had the worst room on the boat and you could see where a queen or a king size bed had been um, to the degree that there was a space and there was a single bed and you could see a nightstand and a nightstand but you know you could have fitted a queen size bed and to me it looked like um, one of two things. One is, oh, well, it's only one person, so she only needs a single bed. Um, and the other thought was this room was had been emptied and they've just quickly made this up so that I've got a room or I've got a cabin. But I was exhausted, absolutely exhausted and drained. Um, I think I realised that there was no point complaining to say this room is, is no, I, you know, but let me say this, this boat was not five star deluxe and uh, yeah, I would not rate this boat at all, not on the circumstances that I was in. Who knows, maybe the other rooms were better. 
Hi. Um, but yeah, basically, like I'd, I'd been told that dinner was at such and such a time and dinner was close. The room was obviously, basically, it was about 20 steps away from my door was where the, um, where the dining room was. Um, so yeah, I didn't have to go far for that. But simply, I'd come in, gone into my room. You know, I knew what time dinner was, so it was like, okay, well, I'm just going to have a sleep while I'm before I go to dinner. But I unpacked my bags because I was in there for a few nights. I unpacked my bags. Um, I went and had a shower. Then I climbed into bed, <clears throat> and unashamedly, I cried. I was angry, I was tired, I was emotional, and I was a wreck. Um, it's one of the few times, like when I go on holidays, I like to holiday alone. But it's one of the few times it's like I wish Nathan had have been with me so that I could deal with it and he would have been able to prop me up because I reckon I was being emotional and being stupid and he would have, he would have grounded me and made me come to grips with things. But yeah, I yeah, climbed, I had my shower, climbed into bed and cried myself to sleep because I was just so yeah, so unimpressed. Mm. Yeah. So I've gotten I've eventually woken up. Um I think I set my alarm because meal times are a set meal time. Um and then here yeah, I've gone to gone I've had my shower gone to have my dinner gone to have me at my dinner and I've gotten to the entry into the room and um yeah they were surprised the staff were surprised to see me there saying I was from this such and such a room and showed them my room key uh they were very surprised to see me uh, and then they hurriedly moved, set, motioned for me to come across to uh, this, basically this table all the way at the back of the, of the dining area um, that had no cutlery, nothing on it. And then they made up the table for me while I was sitting there. They have, um, not like the cruising that I'm used to doing, it was a set you know, you sit, this is your seat for the whole cruise. When you have your meal, this is where you will eat your breakfast. This is where you will eat your dinner. Um, and, yeah, I don't feel lonely often on when I go on holidays because, you know, I meet people and, look, I like my solitude. But I was sitting there having dinner and you see all these big groups of people. And this is what you deal with when you travel alone. You see big groups of people having a lot of fun. Um, most times it doesn't upset me. But this time it was just like I felt, I felt after I'd had bad experience with my cabin, um, yeah, I was just, yeah, not happy. And I felt alone and, yeah. Uh, dinner. So dinner that night I walked around and, been unimpressed with any of the foods there completely unimpressed so probably done the wrong thing more than done the wrong thing I ate salad <laughs> which might seem a bit strange but yeah I ate salad I don't eat salad but I ate salad because I recognized what was in the salad uh, but yet again, when you go to a foreign country, you shouldn't have stuff that is not cooked um, because of the next day. That showed me that you need to eat cooked foods. <sighs> but yeah, it was quite, I felt very isolated. It was, it was horrible. It was actually horrible. But that's what you get. And travel solo. You get the odd moments of loneliness. Um, yeah, I've had so I've had my dinner. 
and then just going back to my room. Uh, I did see red one in the corner. Obviously, with what some of the other guides, they get their own. Obviously, they get their own rooms, and they all all the guides sit at the one table. You know, they obviously they know each other. Um, they see them see each other every Monday to whatever, and then yeah. Oh, okay, so yeah, finished dinner and I've gone back to my room and I've slept. And I will go into the next day because this is only half, a, half an hour so far. Um, I will come back in a sec though. And um, hey, I'm back again. You didn't miss me, so it's all good. From there... I've, after dinner, I've gone back to my room to sleep, and they have. I'll put a picture there. Like some of the other, like the cruise ships that I've been on, they make paper animals or whatever on the uh, outer towers. And yeah, I had this thing that was. Where is it? Ah. <sighs> I had this towel that they had on my first night. I'm just trying to find pictures of it. So you can see on my first night. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what the animals were. I'm trying to look at them to see what the animals were, but I can't really see what they are. Um, but yeah, they they built they give they put towel animals. Um, and they do tend to use utilize whatever is in the room. Um, you know, I think one of them they did me was a a Nile crocodile, but they'd use my scarf as part of it and yeah um, I don't mind the paper towel the paper towels I don't mind them using the towels but when they start moving your personal stuff to make the paper, the animal towels and uh, the towel animals or whatever I, I don't like that uh, I suppose sunnies putting sunnies on an animal yes but actually articles of clothing. It was only a scarf, but yeah, it's still, no, nah, shouldn't have been done. Oh, uh, but yeah, so the next morning, <laughs> uh, the next morning was a brilliant day, but not that good of a day. <laughs> now to understand that takes a little bit of understanding the realities of it. This day was, I, I discovered why you don't eat the salads when you're traveling. But we stopped and got off the ship, the boat, at Com Com Obo, and which was um, geez, I'm losing track of where I'm at. It's not like me. Sorry, guys. So we went to Comombo in the morning. Um, explained about it there was some interesting interesting stuff so this was all out in the open um, they showed carvings where it even included showing um, different medicines and different medical tools used um, they had uh, the uh, what else? They had a massive melt well they call the nylometer. And that was, that's how they worked out the taxes, was the level of the water in the nylometer. 
um, that you know the more water, the more prosperous that year is. The less water, the, the harder the work, the, the, the harvest would have been. Yeah, that, so that's how they tracked how had their taxes there. Um, but there was also um, they also worshipped the worshipped or revered the, the, the Nile crocodile. Um, so you see a bit in relation to the crocodile, you see the crocodile head on some of them. Um, there, <laughs> uh, there's one picture, you can see where people have actually rubbed, rubbed the, the, the wall. But there is a image of a woman birthing a baby. And there's all sorts of equipment around her that is used for the birthing. Uh, yeah, so you know, they even documented that. Um, what else was there? What else? There's all the tools. Oh, uh, there's all the tools, and then I'll show you a picture of the nanometer. Um, uh, yeah, and then it was to the crocodile were to go through into the crocodile museum where they mummified the crocodiles and my stomach had started my stomach had started gurgling by this point and gurgling as in oh it was not good it was not good um but Radwan had actually said you've got to go in here and I'm like I oh, know I need to go back to camp no you've got to go in here and have a look so I've gone in and basically quickly rushed around and then come out again. I, yeah, and straight to my room. It, you know, because where you get off the ship was right at Komombo, so um, you were straight into the having a look at everything. So it was just straight back to the boat. There was no travel. It was just straight walking. And, yeah, got back to my room just as, gastro kicked in full pelt now I don't know whether I had what it was through whether it was oops, hang on, another different symbol Woof, whoosh, hang on gotta find that one <coughs> whether um, whether it was food whether it was whatever the cat scratch or whatever I copped gastro. So I've come, I'm funny. Red one when he actually said goodbye to me in the morning at the, you know, when I got on, when I got back onto the boat, turned around and said, well, when we get to such and such, come back up here and we'll meet, you know, there. And, uh, and I'm like, going, yep, yep, yep. Okay. <clears throat> Not feeling the, the best. So it was like, okay, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Mm. Um, hang on. It's that one. And I will have that one. And where was that one? It's 340. Mm. So, yeah, I, uh, I basically I felt like I'd died. I will say thankfully when I'd gone to went to the travel doctor before I um, went to Egypt and he gave me antibiotics uh, and they were good antibiotics. Um, some women antibiotics can tend to mess the system up a bit for women. And this was one where he gave it to me and when I asked, asked him about it, when he gave it to me, is it going to affect me in this manner? And he's like, no, this won't. But simply put, it was a single antibiotic, single tablet. All I needed to take was just the one. If I wasn't better in 24 hours, then I was to take the second. Um, but basically the one was strong enough to kill any anything that it quit that caused, you know, what is it? barley belly deli diarrhea or 
yeah, well, basically I had the Egyptian version of it. Um, so, yeah, we'd done, I'd taken the tablet and yeah, I slept again because I just wasn't well, wasn't happy, wasn't well. We'd eventually come in to stop at another location and we ended up at Edfu Temple. Yep, Edfu Temple. Um, and yeah, when you go into a lot of the places, a lot of the monuments that you see, there's no hecklers as you go in. But you always come out a different door and there's always hecklers there. This was no different. Ed Food Temple though, I'll we'll share you a couple of pictures. Um, there was one, I don't know whether I managed to get a picture of it. So they do carvings about so many different things. Um, carvings that rep represent movement. Um, no, didn't get it. But in the Edfu one is where they, that's before then, where they celebrate, no, can't get it, um, where they identify the god of fertility. And it's actually, I didn't take a picture of it, which is, yeah. How do I say it? But they'd done a carving with a gentleman where there was sperm coming out a certain point of him. Um, and he was the god of fertility. Uh, and I will say Rad One was semi uncomfortable talking about it, I think because it was just me as a single person that he was uh, talking to. I think it's probably easier for a guy to discuss with a group because they can write it off and laugh it off. Uh, but not when there's just the one person. <laughs> no, that can't Okay. So, we, yet again, he took me through the whole temple, talked and talked and talked, and then he's like, radio, you can go wander around, have a look, and when you come out, I'll meet you at this point over here. Yep, no worries. Um, yeah, so I wandered around and when it was time to come out, um, it's quite interesting. I hadn't seen much in the way of bazaars where people were trying to sell their wares until I got to this point. And I'm not a big shopper. I will help the economy out of where I go and visit but I don't like to feel pressured and I can't barter. I don't know how to get a deal. Um, now, I'm one of those people, if I want something, I buy it. If I don't want it or it's too expensive for me, I don't buy it. So bartering, I just, yeah. I, the only time I've managed to talk somebody down in, per, in, a, in price is when I've been buying a computer. Uh, but yeah, that was interesting. So we've had to go run the gauntlet of this bazaar where people are just, you know, trying to get you to go in. And I did actually stop at one. Um, I did purchase something. Uh, I think it was a necklace. Yeah, it was a necklace. I could call that one. It was a necklace. And yeah, when I came out, Red one, I said, I said, how much did you pay? And I told him, he went, oh, too much. And I just turned around and went, I can't barter, that's it. And he's like, oh, um, yeah. <laughs> Apparently I paid too much for this thing that I brought. But, meh, when you can't barter, you expect that. Oh, yeah. So we've got, oh, part of me. Going back to the boat. Yeah. 
n another uneventful uh, uneventful part of the night. Uh, I think we went through a couple of locks. I come upstairs. I went upstairs and looked at the locks, I believe. We went through some locks that night. Yeah. Yeah, it was quite meh. Uh, I suppose from my experience, it's probably why I'm not keen to go back to Egypt. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see about what happens. Um, yeah, that was that's basically it. Um, I copped gastro and I was sick for a couple of days. Um, I mean, obviously, nothing as bad as the first first day. Um, I did end up needing to take that second tablet, <laughs> uh, but yeah, don't eat salad when you're away in a country that has not got the same standards as yourself, um, water-wise. Uh, yeah. So, guys. There'll be some footage. Hopefully you've enjoyed the footage that I've put in here. I don't know whether I'm putting in any video footage of anything. Um, I can't recall whether I did video footage. Uh, but I will say, guys, thank you for listening to me. Uh, next next uh, destination is actually Luxor. Um, and that's pretty cool. That was Valley of the Kings, Valley of the Queens. Um, and yeah, um, I think there's a couple of other places that we went to, but I will talk about those in the next adventures, next, um, video of, uh, my travel in Egypt. And uh, guys, thank you for watching. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe, hit the thumbs up, thumbs down, leave me a comment. Um, I suppose, have you ever copped gastro when you've travelled so bad <laughs> that it's just puts a big cloud over the whole holiday? Um, so, yeah, guys, thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for another next episode of um, my Egyptian travels and bye for now.